Let's take a look at the profiles of the different types of insulins that are on the market today. So the rapid-acting insulins, sometimes called the ultra-rapid-acting insulins, are usually given at mealtime. There's three different major groups of rapid-acting insulin. There's the aspart insulin that peaks at 10 to 20 minutes. There's Lispro insulin that peaks at 15 to 30 minutes. And there's glulysine insulin that will peak a little bit later at about 20 to 30 minutes time. The short-acting insulins take a little bit longer, but they're sh still considered short-acting. These are the oldest of the insulins, and we call them regular insulins. Um, trade names include humulin and novelin. They peak at around 30 minutes to 60 minutes, and they last up to, uh, up to, four, to 4 to 12 hours. The intermediate insulins last generally in the 12-hour range. They peak at about 1 to 2 hours. We call them intermediate insulins, NPH insulins. The long-acting insulins are the newest insulins out there, and they're really starting to become a mainstay of uh, in insulin therapy. Detamir insulin peaks around 60 to 90 minutes and lasts about 24 hours. Glargine insulin doesn't really have a peak time, or at least that's what the marketing information says. There is a bit of a spike at around 3 or 4 hours, but it's not really a clinically relevant spike. It's only relevant on a pharmacology chart. But from a practical point of view, it doesn't really have a peak time, and it also lasts about 24 hours. There are actually new insulins out there that are super long-acting insulins that now last about 36 to 48 hours, and we will briefly mention them today. As time goes on, they're going to become more and more important. Let's talk about the concept of glycemic excursion. So glycemic excursion really means the difference between the level at the start of ins at the start of a meal and at the end of a meal. So if you take a look at your breakfast excursion, that is the largest excursion of the day. Even though lunch and dinner may be larger meals, there's not as much of an excursion. This is going to be really important when we start to prescribing insulin. I mentioned to you before that we do have some novel insulins out there. The ultra-long acting insulins have just come onto the market in the last probably eight months. Glargine modified insulin has a very, very long duration of action, probably around uh, 36 hours. Now, I also want to talk about inhalational insulins. They, the, these very first products were very unsuccessful, unfortunately. You can see the first puffer was really more like a huge beer can than really a puffer. It was quite inconvenient. It had the spacer built into the, the device, um, and it wasn't as successful, and it ended up getting pulled off the market because of uh, various reasons. There are new insulins out there that are much smaller and perhaps a little bit more palatable, and we'll see if they, if they pick up and take off. Now let's just review the actions of insulin. The actions of insulin does not include decreased protein catabolism in myocytes, decreased protein catabolism in hepatocytes, decreased protein catabolism in adipocytes, and increased triglyceride storage in adipocytes. Which of these does insulin not include? Well, increased triglyceride storage in adipocytes, that's not a correct answer because we know insulin increases triglyceride. Decreased protein catabolism in adipocytes, that's not correct. Decreased protein catabolism in hepatocytes, and decreased protein catabolism in myocytes. So there you have the correct answer.